All right, guys, today Disney dropped some two big major Disney dining headlines. And me, being Disney Rod and being the Disney foodie that I am, it is my duty to give you guys this news. Now, I'm not gonna lie, today I had a different video planned, but once I saw that Disney released the menus for both Steakhouse 71 and Space 220, I knew I had to drop that previous idea and just go for this. I, I wanted to go over both of the menus, kind of give my opinions regarding both of them. And uh, let's just go on with there. Let's start off with Steakhouse 71. Now, Steakhouse 71 is going to be the new restaurant in the contemporary that is replacing The Wave. Now, The Wave was always one of my like family classic favorite restaurants. And in the most recent adventure together, we made a huge, awesome discovery, the bacon and eggs. And then after our vacation, we got the news that they're going to change up the wave. We got so scared, but fear not because the bacon and eggs will be making its return. All right, let's go over the menu. First off, let's start off at breakfast, right? So in the appetizer section, you got that fresh fruit plate, fresh baked breakfast pastries, and some oatmeal. Pretty basic breakfast appetizers. Your entree, you got your American, two eggs cooked to order with breakfast potatoes and choice of bacon, pork sausage, chicken sausage. Basically, the basic breakfast item that you could find in almost every single Walt Disney World quick service breakfast. Uh, you got your eggs benedict. You got Walt's prime rib hash, which actually sounds really good. It's seared prime rib, fried potatoes, caramelized onions, and peppers topped with a fried egg. You also got the Steakhouse 71 feast. So you got eggs benedict, scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, Mickey shaped waffles, bacon cheddar grits, breakfast potatoes, and fresh fruit. You are getting like basically the best of all worlds here because that sounds absolutely amazing. And if you have a big appetite for breakfast, I think this might be the one that you have to go for. You also got that Steakhouse 71 seasonal pancakes, seasonally inspired pancakes with choice of bacon, pork sausage, or chicken sausage. Now, this is going to be the replacement to the Wave's famous sweet potato pancakes, which were actually really good. And I'm interested to see what they're going to do with all these seasonal pancakes. Yeah, you your steak and eggs with two eggs any style and a four ounce filet mignon. That is awesome. You got your veggie omelet, you got ham and cheddar omelet, western omelet. Florida Eggs Benedict and Avocado Toast. Then you continue to get your sides, your non-alcoholic specialty beverages. And for those of you that do have uh, any words of allergies, they do have an allergy-friendly entree all the way in the bottom. Now, real quick, I want to talk about the breakfast. It sounds absolutely amazing. I think this has one of the better breakfast menus at Walt Disney World property. And uh, for the prices, it seems super worth it. And I would love to give it a try sooner rather than later. So let's go to the lunch menu. In your appetizer section, you got the French onion onion soup, baby iceberg wedge salad, fork and knife Caesar salad, steakhouse 71 onion rings, shrimp cocktail, sea salt dusted potato brioche, and bacon and eggs. There is the legend itself. Just reading bacon and eggs again on the menu, uh, it was... It was like a huge burden lifted off of my shoulders. Like, I'm not gonna lie, once I saw that the new menu was released, I got a little scared that it wasn't gonna be there, but... <sighs> Thankfully it is. Now this appetizer section in general actually sounds really good, but of course, if I had to pick one, I'm definitely going for those bacon and eggs. Now let's check out the entrees, all right? So you got that crab cake slider, which is lump crab cakes, Old Bay remoulade, tomato, pickle slaw on a brioche bun. Served with a choice of petite wedge salad, Parmesan fries, or pasta salad. That sounds really good. I'm a huge fan of crab cakes and that sounds absolutely amazing. So you got your prime rib sandwich, you got Steakhouse 71 stack burger, you got a turkey club fish sandwich, gourmet grilled cheese, all right? You got your steak fritz, your vegetable wellington, and Salisbury steak. Now, all of these entrees sound absolutely amazing. If I had to pick some of my like highlights, I would go for those crab cake sliders, the prime rib sandwich, and maybe even the stack burger itself, because the three sound absolutely amazing. And for the prices that there are, it, it's such a well-valued restaurant, and it, it just sounds good. I know it's gonna be good because The Wave has always been a high-end restaurant in terms of food quality, and I just have a feeling that this is gonna be good. You go down to desserts, right? You're gonna have that Steakhouse 71 chocolate cake. I've seen the picture of it. Check it out. That looks beautiful. And it says layers of whiskey-infused chocolate cake, chocolate mousse, and raspberries. That sounds absolutely amazing, and I would love to give it a try. Then you got your Ambrosia Creme Brulee, and apple tart to tin. Looking over this lunch menu, it actually sounds really good, especially if you're a fan of sandwiches, which sandwiches and sliders and things like that, it kind of makes up the, 
the overwhelming majority of the entrees but if you are a fan of that i think that this is going to be a great lunch option especially on busy magic kingdom days you kind of just like take a little break midday just go next door to the contemporary check out steakhouse 71 and it's going to be an absolutely amazing lunch now let's move on to dinner now all the appetizers are the same for dinner as it is for lunch so let's just kind of go over to the entrees and here you're going to have your steakhouse cuts you're going to have an eight ounce beef tenderloin medallion six ounce filet mignon 10 ounce new york strip six ounce top sirloin steak a 14 ounce dry aged pork bone in rib chop a 12 ounce roast prime rib and classic yorkshire pudding now this is kind of the typical standard steakhouse menu right you're gonna have your different cuts of steak and it says that each steak is served with one side and one sauce but one thing that really makes this stand out from everything else are the prices the prices of the steaks are far lower compared to other steakhouses around walt disney world like if you look at le cellier all right the filet mignon in le cellier is almost 60 dollars all right so finding here a filet mignon for 36 that's a nice change of pace i'll tell you that now the quality of the cuts themselves right we're not gonna know until the restaurant opens itself and we do get to try it uh but i don't think it's gonna be that bad like i said before the wave has always categorized itself to being one of the higher end table service restaurants in terms of food quality they've always put a lot of effort into their food and you could tell and you could taste the difference all right and so i think that they're going to continue that tradition and and just go with amazing steaks for a great price now the size that you can get with your steaks you're looking at garlic mashed potatoes au gratin potatoes macaroni and cheese cream spinach seared broccolini red wine glazed mushrooms and charred asparagus then you got all your steak sauces and you also got three other entrees that are not steak so first you got that florida sustainable fish and pa papillote i think i'm saying that right i have no idea what that is honestly the shrimp fried potatoes asparagus baby carrots and lemon beurre blanc you like your chicken ch chasseur which is pan seared airline chicken breast parsnip puree roasted mushrooms and the sauce chasseur third but certainly not least you got your vegetable wellington at least i'm able to pronounce that one <laughs> then you look at the dessert menu it's the same as lunch i'm telling you that chocolate cake is definitely standing out and i would love to give it a try soon so there you have the new menu for steakhouse 71 I, at first i was scared that they were changing up the wave but seeing this menu I, i'm super hopeful and i think that it's going to be a great restaurant and and I can't wait to try it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the opening date for Steakhouse 71 has yet to be announced, but I do think that now with all the pictures being released and also the menu and pricing being released, I think that the opening date will be revealed sooner rather than later, and I think that it is going to be open by the time the 50th anniversary comes around. All right, now let's move on and let's talk about the menu for Space 220 that has finally been released. It just took them about six days before the restaurant actually opens to release the menu. So first up is the lunch menu, and here you are looking at a two course prefix menu for $55 each here's a select one of each liftoffs which are going to be your appetizers and your star course which is going to be your entree now let's check out the appetizers here in liftoffs you got the big bang burrata which is burrata de mozzarella grilled artichoke hearts arugula sunflower seed romesco then you got your starry calamari which is fried calamari italian cherry peppers spicy marinara roasted peppers citrus aioli you got your blue moon cauliflower so it's going to be tempura fried cauliflower housemade hot sauce blue cheese dust you got your neptuna tartare which is yellow fin tuna yusu ginger miso soy avocado radish apple sesame crackers then you got your centauri caesar salad your space greens and your galaxy grain salad you got your three different salads down there now let's move on to the entrees and here you got your seared tuna spiced yellow fin tuna avocado marinated egg brown rice edamame pineapple and radishes you also have your blue house salmon glazed carrots king oyster mushrooms baby bok choy ginger and beurre blanc then you got your centauri burger the signature beef blend white cheddar cheese bacon shredded lettuce tomatoes fried potato wedges and sriracha aioli you got a flat iron steak free range chicken baked macaroni which is uh candele pasta sausage ragu broccolini sheep's milk ricotta bechamel and pecorino and the last one on the menu is the terra bolognese which is uh, corn linguine tempeh ragu macadamia nut ricotta zucchini and mushroom you also do have a galactic lobster globe which is main lobster salad quinoa booger wheat avocado lettuce mango citrus dressing crispy wonton which will be an additional 18 dollars 
<sighs> that's a lot of reading you do choose one from liftoff and one from the star course and i feel like for 55 dollars two courses that's uh that's a bit of a steep price all right but i'll talk about the prices a little later now let's move on to the dinner menu all right for dinner you are looking at a three course prefix menu you're looking at an appetizer an entree and a dessert for 79 dollars jesus <laughs> That's a $24 increase for just a dessert. Damn. <laughs> All right, when you look at liftoff, it is the same menu as lunch. You move on to star courses. There are some differences. Here, you're going to have a slow rotation short rib. You're going to have Florida red snapper. You're going to have X2 duck. So it's going to be roasted and comfy crescent duck, butternut squash flan, Brussels sprouts, and orange glaze. And the other addition is going to be that 8-ounce filet mignon, which is going to have a cabernet butter, potato leek croquette, haricot vert, and you could add shrimp or a half lobster for an additional cost. Now, on top of the $79 that you have already paid, you could actually pay for two specialty items, which will be one and a half pound baked whole lobster stuffed with jumbo crab for an additional $20 or a 24 ounce bone in ribeye for an additional $18. Then you move on and you have your dessert menu. Here you're gonna have your supernova sweets. Here you're gonna have carrot cake, a sticky toffee pudding cake, chocolate cheesecake, gelato and sorbet, or lemon mousse. Now, of course, if you scroll down to both of the menus, you're gonna have your satellite sides, which are gonna be an additional cost. You also have your alcoholic beverages. Now, I don't know what to tell you. The menu sounds good, and there are some interesting sounding food items on both the lunch and the dinner. But I feel like the prices are a bit steep, especially for what you're getting. For a three course prefix menu, $79, and you, you could still look at more because there is the add-ons, there's, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I feel like it's gonna be a bit too expensive, but I, eventually I would like to give it a try. I, I will wanna wait to see what people say. Uh, once people go and I start reading reviews and seeing what it is, I'll make the distinction as to whether or not those $79 are actually worth it. Uh, because if I pay $79 and I have a bad experience, you're gonna get another rent like the one I did at be our guest. <laughs> I, I think that the food is gonna be good. I don't think that they're going to open up this restaurant, charge that much for three courses and then give you bad food. I think that it's actually gonna be good. But I don't know, for that price range, I feel like I could go to California Grill and have an amazing dining experience for less or the same amount of money. Uh, we'll see what happens and we'll see what I decide. But at the moment, my personal opinion, I don't think it's worth it. But of course, that could all change once those reviews start coming out. And if people are losing their minds over it, well, I mean, of course, I might want to give it a try because I want to see what the hype is going to be about. But I don't know. Right now, I'm a little on the fence. Now, at the time of recording, they actually haven't added the menu to the Walt Disney World website or the My Disney Experience app. Uh, they just have it in the special website that the Patina Group created for Space 220. I will make sure to put that link in the description below if you guys want to check it out. They've also uploaded pictures of the restaurant and also of the food items themselves on that website. So if you want to check those out, just check out that link in the description below. Now, another thing to keep in mind, guys, is that Space 220 is going to be opening September 20th, but from the 20th to the 26th, there will be no reservations available for Space 220. It will only be walk-ins allowed. Starting the 27th of September, though, that's when reservations will be available, and you could start booking those reservations on September 20th. But that does it for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think about both of the restaurants and which one you're excited for the most. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button and hit subscribe. I upload a brand new video every Wednesday. Thank you for being part of the Disney family and see you real soon.